time of the morning, good time of the day to all of you listening, watching. I just wanted to introduce everybody to our new Galena and Ella, nice little show, and we're talking about real estate and beyond. And today, Galena and I will be discussing not just what the markets are doing, but how you, our clients, our buyers, can actually beat the market at its best or at its worst with our help. And with that, Galena, you're my go-to expert in the San Diego real estate. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be speaking in front of all of you. Okay, so if we're going to talk directly about the San Diego, San Diego, uh, we are seeing the uh, shortage of housing for probably about last seven years, regardless of um, cycles of the real estate that usually five, seven up, five, seven down, plus minus California, a little different. So uh, California um, is in the shortage of the housing for about 2 million units and San Diego 68,000 units short. Even though that we do have a lot of new constructions, according to the National Association of Realtors and um, other stats, there will not be enough housing to satisfy the demand of people that would like to purchase either the resale or the new developments. What we're seeing is the major issue with inventory pretty much everywhere, and San Diego is not immune to it. And one of the reasons from the lending standpoint that we're seeing that shortage, that lack of inventory, is because upwards of 80% of the U.S. population, U.S. homeowner population specifically, those who have a mortgage and own a home are under 6%. And actually, a vast majority of those under 6% are in the 2 and 3% brackets with the current mortgages. So there is very little, if none, incentive for the sellers to actually, or owners to actually sell. Absolutely. On the top of that, um, I'll add that 85% of the homeowners in California have equity in their home. So if they don't need to sell, they're not in a hurry to put their house on market. So basically, you couple that up with, like I said, a huge amount of equity. Couple that up yeah. with the lower interest rates on the mortgages they hold, which does make them very affordable. It creates very little incentive, again, none to really start you know, thinking about selling because usually people sell when they want to upgrade, they want to maybe upsize or they want to downsize or they want to move elsewhere. Now, how many people in your experience that you are talking to are talking about upsizing or downsizing but are stuck because of the current rate and equity environment? I don't have that many clients um, like this right now, but I just want to add that if people need to even the downsize and they have very affordable mortgage per se, like two, three percent um, on their house right now, but they're going to be selling their house. Yes, they're going to have an equity and all of the above, and they will have a big chunk for the down payment. However, their mortgage could be totally the same as for the house that they own right now. Or higher. There is literally, uh, or higher. So there is no really reason, you know, to put the property and market, go into the smaller place, don't have um, that much of the square footage or the backyard or whoever has whatever, you know, pluses in their current homes. There is no urge to put those properties in market. So what I am seeing in our market is... Yes, it's luck of inventory and the demand is to purchase the house is still overpacing the houses that are coming up on market. Even though for the last two weeks we have more homes on market. So more homes on market um, in San Diego, it's like whoopsie doo, almost 400 in all San Diego. I'm like, come on, it's a, it's, it's a joke, but it is not. And so that's well, we had 280 some thousand last month. So yes, thank you. We have a little more, but you know, it's not enough. So back to you, Ella. So what are we doing <laughs> to win the offer? So as you and I were talking, this insane lack of inventory and the pent up demand, demand is still strong. We see with our buyers every flipping day, basically, that there's more buyers than homes available. 
what it's creating as a result is multiple bids and properties. But before we dive into that, there is something worth noting, and that is the, the high interest rate environment we've been in for the last year and a half. And frankly, you know, high interest rate, take it with a grain of salt, please. I'm saying high interest rate compared to where we were during the crazy COVID time because the COVID rates were artificial simply due to COVID and government pumping money into all of the financial markets and into people's pockets. That's really what drove the rates down, which again was completely artificial. Now that the rates have gone up, which frankly over the last 30 or so years, 8% really is more of an average rate, but with a really sharp increase. I mean, we went from like here to here in less than six months. The heightened rate environment, I should say, not the crazy high rates, but the heightened rate environment is here to stay for a while longer. Yes, we all expected and the talking heads and the experts and everybody else expected the rates to come down by now. It hasn't happened. And to thank for that, we have the war in Ukraine. Now we have the war in Israel. We have government still pumping money into the economy and putting out more uh, packages that result in higher inflation. Again, what we're seeing is higher rates are here for longer. Now we're talking interest rates staying elevated in the sevens and possibly pushing eight, maybe for the next few months, maybe for another six months. So that being the case, those who can buy right now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy. You should absolutely buy if you can afford the payment and if the payment works for you for the time being, because Yes, the rates are higher. Yes, as a result, though, there is less homes on the market. And when there is less homes on the market, then there is demand. There is always heightened competition or increased competition for every home. Galina, what are we seeing for multiple offers on the ground, essentially? San Diego is still in the multiple offer situation. In, well, first and foremost, uh, the good thing is that uh, thanks God, the sellers are coming back to their sense and they pricing properties more reasonable, equally to the pro yeah, well, reasonable, back to normal, um, back to you know, comparing the property that has been sold in this particular area. So they coming back to their sense. So what we've seen in 2021 and 22, sellers were like, oh my God, I can sell my property. I can gain this. Okay, this property sold for a mil. I'm going to put one and five and I'm going to have 300,000 above asking. Oh my God, I'm going to be all chocolate up, right? So it's not the point now. And they're getting back to the sense that you have to see the comps around and to price your um, property accordingly. So you can create not only just the buyers, and we are not looking just for the cash buyers in San Diego, and we have less cash and investor buyers in San Diego as of right now, because, well, first of all, they already have their portfolios built up in 21 and 22. I mean, they're full, but it's those properties are not too interested to them because they real normal properties, they are not fixer upper and so on and so forth. So what we've seen in San Diego now that the sellers are putting the properties at the correct market value price. The buyers, however, still have to compete with either the higher offers or we still have some of the full cash offers from the old money not only investors. I don't see that many investors in San Diego right now. So my particular clients, they were pre-approved by Ella, by the way, um, for 1.1. We start our search at 850 and above. We were not looking anything uh, even close to 1.1 just because we needed that stretch to be able to um, write write. Either and I do the escalation clause in my offers. So I say, will my clients, my sellers to um, offer, for example, five, 10,000 above asking um, or above asking with a competing offer or whatever the, the, the verbiage is. So the seller will know that my clients still have an opportunity and they still pre-approved for higher than, for example, $900,000 or $1 million. And yet, yet we were over a bit. So the first offer for the particular clients that we were talking about, the other um, buyers purchased cash, uh, above asking. So they were, we were not even able to compete because it was above their limit. A, B, uh, the second offer that we placed, uh, we were just 
overbid very dramatically, like over 100,000. I mean, we were not ready to put 100,000 above asking. And the third one was, I guess, again, cash offer. It was not that much above. But you have to understand that cash offer, they have no contingencies. They don't have any terms holding them up to uh, purchase the property. So they can close seven to 10 days, depending on the screen title. And this is it. And it's very favorable to the sellers. So sellers sellers tended more liking the cash offers rather than selling to the families. However, I have to say that not everybody is willing to do so. So if that house, it's their baby and either their kids grew up in them or they invested a lot of money in the remodeling over the years and years, I have to tell you that they want the normal family to live in this house and cherish it and baby in the house and take care of it the way they did. And so it's very favorable. It's very rarely, but still like a little chance, gives a little more chance to the buyer. Our clients, so that the fourth offer, what did we have to do? Oh my God, we went above and beyond. We are not only gave like 50000 above asking, we removed all the contingencies except inspection. We had three days to remove the inspection contingencies. It's not dangerous. So to explain you the contingencies are so that that what holds up the buyer from canceling the extra and still remaining their deposit. If you're removing all contingencies all the way, including the loan, and the buyer still not satisfied with the inspection, and the buyer want to cancel out of the escrow, oops, the deposit goes to the seller. Representing the buyer, we do have a huge liability, and we have to protect not only the buyers, but their finances. That was very challenging. However, we did, and everything is fine, and the loan is ready. Ella, go to the loan part of it. We didn't close yet. We are literally at the age of closing, but it was it was very stressful and difficult to win the offer to begin with. There were four offers. We don't know how much of them were above or below um, our offer. As agent saying, thank you for a very clean offer. We had only one thing that they counter us out. It was removing the loan contingency. So I went to Ella like, Ella, can we remove contingency for the loan with an offer? Ella goes, yeah, the loan is ready. Okay, so let's rock and roll. And that kind of brings me, not kind of, that really brings me to what the solution is on how using this particular buyer and their situation as an example on how we can actually beat out other offers, even though they may be higher, by removing the finance contingency. So what most people don't realize, there are multiple levels of pre-approvals available to the clients and actually a lot of agents don't necessarily realize that there are multiple levels of pre-approvals. Luckily, Galena is an expert in her field. She's been doing this for a long time and she knows exactly how to play this game. So we devised a strategy and a plan for our buyer. We essentially rolled out the red carpet in terms of what we can do to make them more bankable or more desirable when they make a potential offer. So what are the four levels of pre-approvals first? The first one is called a prequal, not to be actually confused or combined with a pre-approval. A prequal, as I say it, is not worth the paper it's written on. No one, I'm gonna repeat it a thousand times, not one agent, not one seller, We'll look at your offer if you're sending your offer with only prequel. Because why? It means nothing. Perfect. You took my words straight, <laughs> straight away from me. Because exactly. I was just about to say that the prequel is not worth the paper it's written on. A prequel is where we take the verbal information from the potential buyer because we can't not do that by law. And based on the verbal info provided, we issue a piece of paper, well, really an electronic piece of paper that says that we talk to them. This is the information they provided. We think they can qualify for up to X. Now, if you remember the old early 2000s adage from the computer world, gigo, garbage in, garbage out, that's exactly what a prequel is because a buyer can say, I make X per month. And then when we get the written confirmation that X can be splashed 
by two, by three, by one and a half, by whatever, so it may not hold water. That's why, as Galena also pointed out, prequels, don't do it. Not worth it. If you're getting a prequel from your lender, do not walk away, freaking run. Go to somebody who will actually issue a pre-approval letter. Now, what is a pre-approval letter? There is a loan officer pre-approval letter that is a letter that I, as a loan officer, loan originator, write based on the information you have provided that's been backed up, actually, by your financials, pay stubs, taxes, W-2s, you name it, bank statements. I get to review those. I get to run the file through what's called an automated underwriting system. I pull your credit, soft or hard, that's for another conversation. And actually, there are videos on that. If you'd like to check them out, go check them out. And we issue a pre-approval after the, again, financials have been looked at. So we're usually upwards of 80% certain that the buyer will pull through with the financing and we can do it. We can close the transaction. Now... That's the most common one, and Galena can actually attest to that as well. The most common attachment to your offer as a client yes, is absolutely. loan officer generated pre approval. Do the agents on the listing side look at those? Yes, of course. If How closely do they look at them? Well, depend on the agent. And I know as a routine, I usually will call the listing when my client makes an offer. I will call the listing agent to let him know that the client has been, in fact, pre-approved and that, yes, we have reviewed their financials and, yes, we're ready to pedal to the metal as soon as the offer is accepted. Better agents will reach out and call me upon receiving the offer with my pre-approval letter and ask me the same questions whether I have actually reviewed the financials. Galena? Yes, I've done that. I mean, I'm doing that all day long. Perfect. So, again, that just makes you... Um, well, okay. One of the better yeah. agents out there. Right. So going back, if I represent the seller and I received an offer and I have the pre-approval letter before I going to even tax my sellers that I do, I got an offer and the conditions of the offer, I'm calling lender first to confirm that they have all the information and it's all verified. Only after that, when the lender confirms, only after that, I text my client, I send them an email, I am attaching the full offer with the pre-approval letter and verification of funds, and after that, I'm giving them a call, or I'm texting them and asking, what is the best time to give you a call so we can go over the offer? Would you like me to come over, uh, come, come over to your house? Or we can do it, you know, on Zoom or whichever other ways we are, we have an ability nowadays to review the offers. Now, there are two more levels of pre-approvals that now we're getting into, and that's where the solution to the problem, frankly, lies. There is... Base level, more or less, underwriting pre-approval. So we essentially, before even send somebody shopping, we'll package up with a bow their financials and send them in for an underwriter to review and sign off on their finances. It includes their income, it includes their credit, and it includes their assets, meaning where's the money coming from for the down payment. With that an underwriting pre-approval letter is issued, and that's the letter that signifies to the other side, to the seller and their agent, that not only a loan officer has reviewed the documentation and the financials, but also an underwriter, person actually licensed to issue an underwriting pre-approval. So with that, and that's exactly what we did for our buyer, as a matter of fact, we put them through the underwriting pre-approval. That is exactly what allowed us to remove the finance contingency, going in and making the offer, meaning the underwriter has already reviewed the financials, we're already in the clear, and the only items that we will need to actually close are appraisal, title, and the offer itself, frankly. With that, we're basically declaring to the world that this buyer has been vetted, and guess what? We can also close in 10 days. So that's where I was going. I was rerouting back to when I was writing an offer. So this particular one is the probate sale. It's a little bit more challenging than just your regular transaction. So the listing agent came back not only asking us to remove loan contingency, they asked if we can close uh, in 10 days. And I'm like, Ella, it's a probate. The documents at the court, the attorneys are overlooking. Literally, they requested 14 days, but it was Thursday evening. So we had Friday that seller did not sign the offer yet. 
And then Saturday and Sunday, which was leaving us only for the long 10 days, including another two days of weekend. Ella goes, yes, we can. When I told the seller's agent, the listing agent, that we have a DU approval, and they like, can you close in 10 days? I'm like, well, let me run through my lender. Sure enough, we were able. So that's how we won the offer because my clients were fully underwritten with Ella, with um, the underwriter and ready to close. So basically the loan was ready. We were waiting on the conditions for of the house. So literally that's what all we were waiting for. Correct? That is absolutely correct. To speak to that, you know, things are different. Obviously conditions are different on the ground in every locale throughout the country. And I work for Fairway. Fairway is a national company. As a matter of fact, we're one of the top five independent mortgage banks. And our CEO, Steve Jacobson, joined us on our local branch call uh, just this week, as a matter of fact. And one of the things he brought up about the California market, especially Southern California for that matter, is the speed that is needed to compete with other offers. Things may be different elsewhere, in Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, buy downs are the rage. In California, yes, we'll talk about buy downs separately on the next video. But in California, right now, it's how fast you can close because that's how you can compete with cash offers on the ground. Which brings me to the next point. There is one more level of even higher underwriting pre-approval, and that's our cash guarantee. Meaning, not only does the buyer and their financials get underwritten. And again, the only items outstanding for that approval or removal of the finance contingency in California. But if there is anything out of the norm, it gets addressed up front. And we as a company, Fairway, will issue a cash guarantee to the seller. Our legal department will sign off on it, meaning we provide the underwriting pre-approval and we guarantee that if for some reason the transaction will not close, the seller would get either 10K to their name, that's $10,000 to the seller, or we, as fairly, will buy the property from them. So the sale will not fall apart and the seller will be made whole and will still get their money. And that is the next level. This particular client did not necessarily want to opt in for it because it does take opt in from the buyer. Although Galina and I. It's not for actually, everyone. Correct. Galina and I were pushing pretty hard for the cash guarantee. Again, it's up to our buyer. Me personally, I would strongly encourage my Southern California buyers to actually go through the full length and get the cash guarantee in place because that trumpets to the world that not only are you ready to compete with cash offers, that it's equal to a cash offer. We can close in 10 to 15 days. We as a company stand behind your offer, behind your financing, and there is no way in hell that the buyer will essentially back out on a cash guarantee unless, of course, there is an inspection contingency. And uh, I would never, if we removed the appraisal and loan, I would never suggest my clients to remove the inspection contingency. Although back in 2020, yes, we removed all contingencies and we were giving about asking just to win the deal. Yes, that was in place. We had separate disclosures for that. Compass created it, uh, contingent free offers. Yes, we've done it, but the clients were completely sure. Doesn't matter of the condition of the property, they're still gonna buy it just because there is nothing else, or they were overbitten a thousand times and they tired and they just wanna settle the bottom of the line. San Diego, yes, we are not very high on buy down rates. Some people asking, but I don't see it a lot, but we all about quick. You know, everybody wants to go to the beach. We have like uh, 12 months weather, the like spring, you know, plus minus eight in Celsius. So uh, this is our market. Our market is really, really tough. And San Diego is very unique, not only as a city, it's v it, it, the, the market is very unique here. And for example, I can say if one part of San Diego, the south of San Diego, median price about eight seventy for last month, and we have Rancho Santa Fe, six millions plus. It's a medium, you know. Hey, hey, they have only fourteen homes on market. So San Diego is absolutely very different and unique city and market. I mean, a lot of people 
want to live here. So therefore, the competition is even higher than the other places in California. Um, it's much cleaner than Los Angeles. I don't want to bad mouth in Los Angeles, but we are and our beaches are cleaner. Um, our streets are cleaner. We have more job opportunities. I mean, you name it and it's here. I mean, if you want to go up and skiing in the Big Bear, you can go and then you can, you know, drive down and go surf and you can go walk on the beach. I mean, San Diego is such a wide range of things to do. So everybody wants to live here. I can tell. You just don't love where you live at all. Oh, no passion no. here. I'm a patriot of San Diego. That's what I'm saying. Not Cali. <laughs> Just San Diego. And, and, and yes, maybe, and I do know that other states, they favor, buy down the rates. Here, sellers will not even look at it. Oh, buy, I'm not buying anything for the buyers. I'm paying commissions. Exactly. And again, it's it's all down to competing with cash offers, competing potentially with higher offers, but a 30-day close on the higher offer that's financed versus actually providing the underwriting guarantee and closing in 10 days or a cash guarantee and closing in 10 to 15 days versus everybody else possibly offering a little higher, but no guarantees in place. So as far as tools go, I would strongly encourage our Cali buyers, our especially Southern Cali buyers, to consider those options to strengthen their buying position so they can win their bids. Because what do we see down the pike, Galena? I mean, we don't really see the prices dropping. I know the sky is not falling. The um, no, falling the, sky is not, the sky is not falling. If we're going to compare last September to this September, guess what? We already have 7% gain, which is like literal. It's not 20 like in 21, right? But it's 7% gain. It's significant. So we are in our kind of okay market, you know, was gaining the, um, the the equity. I forgot the word. So the national appreciation rate is actually, you know, about 4.6% if, if I'm not mistaken. So as Glenda right. just said, San Diego market, their appreciation rate seven. for the year is seven. I mean, that makes it, again, for a highly competitive bidding situation. But it also is an indication that the values are not going down. And even with the higher interest rates for the next, like I said, few to six months, even for a year, let's say, none of us are really believing or seeing that the values will necessarily go down or that the multiple offers will not be an ongoing thing. Because frankly, there's just no inventory. There's just not enough inventory and enough demand still to carry the markets. And it boils down to the good old supply and demand formula. Supply is here. Demand is here. The price has to go up. Yes. And again, the price climbing very slowly comparing to 21 and 22. However, it's a normal regular. And another tool, Ella, that's what I meant, meant, meant to say. On the top of your part, um, if you want to work with me, I'll prefer to work with any buyers because what I'm doing, I'm preparing a comparative market analysis for every property that you're placing an offer on. So you'll know that property has the value that you're placing an offer on. And on the top of that, it will appraise even at the value or above, even though even if you're... Um, putting like 50,000 um, uh, grants above asking price. So you still going to have that confirmation or assurance that your property will appraise at that time. Speaking of which, that's exactly what happened with our buyer. They went above the ask and it's still appraised right on the nose, but it's still appraised because yes, Galena does go the extra mile to make sure that you're not overpaying for the property. Because if you're waiving an appraisal contingency, or you're agreeing to what's called an appraisal gap, if the home doesn't appraise, you would be on the hook, you as a buyer would be on the hook for the difference between a purchase price and the appraisal. My friends, it all boils down to working with the right professionals, working with the best professional team. I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm referring to Why believing you. But you do want to go with a team that knows what they're doing, that knows how to win your bed offer. To home, how to put together the best offer and protect you at the same time because that's really what it's all about is not just putting you in a home just for the hell of it it's about putting you in a home 
that will be best for your financial condition. Also, I do always explain to my clients, guys, you're buying a house. You have, per se, the most 17 days to decide, do you like that house? Do you want that house? Can you place yourself at that house? Will you be happy living in this house? You have 17 days. In our case, we had three days. Okay, we've done fine. But I am saying it's not a pair of shoes, even expensive ones or expensive purse. You cannot return it within 30 days. You buy it, you buy it now, your loan is ready, we are closing, the house is yours. Exactly. And once again, that's another reason why it's so important to work with the right team of professionals that will have your best interest at heart, not just a commission check at the end of the transaction, but your best interest at heart at all given times. And with that, my friends, we invite you to subscribe, like, comment. I always want to see your comments. I always want to see your opinion. If you're moving to San Diego from other parts of the country, hit us up. If you're local to San Diego, even better, hit us up again. We want to talk to you and we want to bring our expertise to you to serve you. I'm here in San Diego to help anybody who would like to move. Or if you're living in San Diego, I would be happy to help you even though I can explain you the selling and purchase process without any strings attached, complimentary, hit me up.